Hi everyone, my name's Scott. Welcome to Planes, Trains, Everything and welcome to Glasgow Central Station. This is the Caledonian Sleeper. I travelled on this last year between Glasgow and Euston and I travelled in a seat and when I got to Euston Station I came to the conclusion this was the most uncomfortable overnight rail journey I'd done in my life and I've done some doozies. Since then, however, I've travelled on a coach between London and Prague and that took 20 hours. And I thought, how can I survive a 20 hour journey, which is actually not too bad, but I can't survive an 8 hour journey on the Caledonian Sleeper. And then I realised, yeah, before I travelled last time I looked at too many reviews online, looked at too many YouTube videos and came to the conclusion it was uncomfortable before I even boarded the train. So this time I'm going down to London, I'm going to give it a second chance, I've got positive mental attitude and we're going to have a great old journey tonight. In fact, if you haven't subscribed already and you do so, not only will I do a toilet tour, which I don't normally do, but I, and I certainly didn't do one the last time, but I'll go to the bar and I'll buy you a beer. How about that? This is Coach H, which is my home for the next eight hours. They won't allow us in for another 30 minutes yet, but they still allow us in an hour and a half before departure, which is quite generous. That there is the bar. The power of a positive mental attitude. Right, let's get on board. At last, we were able to leave the cold platform and enter the train. This time I was at the centre of the carriage and not above the bogies, so the noise experienced last time wasn't an issue this time. This is my one monthly vice, the European edition of today's railways. It describes routes, mentions changes to services and generally just inspires me. The staff were very friendly, although I wasn't allowed to enjoy my London Pale Ale in the bar, as I was a sitting passenger and the bar was subject to availability, mainly to be used by sleeper passengers. The man behind me challenged me to a blind battle. I opened the blind around 10 inches to get some footage for this fine channel and after 15 minutes I saw the blind slowly, very, very slowly get lowered. Perhaps he thought I wouldn't notice. Being a night journey with a rear facing seat there would be little to film so I let him win.
The worst part of this journey wasn't the train noise, but the noise made from the passengers. Coughing and spluttering, banging of trays, conversations and general racket. London Houston, this is London Houston Station, the train has 780, all change to all two. London, Houston. Did I sleep last night? I might have nodded off for an hour or two. Uh, the journey itself wasn't as bad as the one I did last year, and that's because my seat was in the middle of the carriage. I wasn't over one of the bogies, and so it wasn't quite as noisy. There are advantages of using the Caledonian sleeper over coaches. For example, there's more legroom, there's a bar, the toilets are huge, and you can move around a bit. But those seats are so uncomfortable, they really are. Anyway guys, this is Houston. This is one of my least favourite stations in the UK. But there is a little gem and it makes it worthwhile. I'll show you what it is. Leon, it's the best part of Houston Station apart from the exit. It's a great place for breakfast as well because after the Caledonian Sleeper I was famished. Anyway, the Caledonian Sleeper has gone up a level or two in my esteem. Not too much, but it has gone up a little bit. Thanks very much for coming along on this adventure with me and I'll see you next time. Positive mental attitude. This is going to be a great journey. We're going to have a great old time down to Houston. There are advantages of the train over coaches, mind you. You can move around, there's a bar, the toilet is huge, and there's a lot more leg room on the train. But it's certainly not a comfortable journey. These seats 